Welcome to this video on tape reading price action trading strategies. What we have here is the E-mini. It's a two minute chart on the left and a time in sales over on the right. And you see a couple of block trades just came across there. I have that set to be 50 contracts or more. And we just broke down through a support level here or previous low and let's see what happens all right so basically there's another block order over on the right 158 contracts this time and there we go now i'm just fast forwarding here um the pre-recorded this so that i could uh, edit this down to a timely manner because i always try to keep these videos under 10 minutes that's part of our um format under 10 minutes so we've got some selling going on block order at 50 block order at 155 uh sell and uh, then now you see some of the violet ones coming up, the colors there. Uh, those violet colors, by the way, those meant that the uh, orders came in at uh, below the bid. So there's more block order selling, 108 contracts, 292 contracts. And so again, below that low on the price action, where you can see the chart. Nope, there's another block order at 400. Uh, again, that's uh, so if it's red, it is at the bid. And if it's green, it's at the offer. And you saw the violet, that's below the bid. And if it's light green, it'll be above the offer. So those will show some um, you know, dramatic people willing to pay a little more, or maybe they're just getting slippage. Um, but you can see we've got three big block orders there. Normally, by the way, when I trade the E-minis, I'll set the block trades at 100. Okay, move forward here again to save some time. So as you can see now, I added the uh, volume histogram at the bottom, and now we got a big volume spike here. And um, that's below again, below I put the black horizontal line on there. You can see uh, breaking through resistance. So what's happening here? We've got a lot of selling coming in. Look at all the sell orders there. And by the way, I'd, I've set it up so it doesn't print anything below 10 contracts. Uh, a couple more violet orders coming in, me, me, making uh, sure that people are meaning, sorry, got a little cold here today, meaning that people are really willing to um, uh, even uh, get a little slippage on those orders. Okay, sorry. So now we're coming back up and we got some green orders coming back down. Remember, we got all these sell orders. Here's the point. Have all these sell orders. There's another block at 50, another block trade at 200. And now, so what they're doing is they're probably shorting into resistance here. They are thinking, okay, we broke through support and we come back to resistance. And so we'll take this short here. A lot of red, again, orders coming in at the bid, generally selling. And so they're trying to short off this resistance level here. All right, we fast forward again. Uh, well, guess what? Now we broke up through that resistance and we have come back up. And now we got some of the light green prints there. So that means that they are trading uh, above the offer. So now they're willing to get some slippage there. Oh, I didn't move my black line up. Sorry about that. <laughs> That's okay. We'll get that in place. And um, so now, uh, but the price action has broken above that previous uh, support. And so we got broke below it. And now we're broken back above it. And so that uh, breakout trade, which is basically what probably a lot of those people were doing, they were trading a breakout trade to the downside and it didn't work. It failed. And so this is very typical. This is why when I watch price action, I watch it along with another price action in this case, meaning watching the tape. So this is called tape reading. Uh, it's one you know, there's other aspects of tape reading, certainly beyond what I'm doing here today. Uh, this is just looking at the time and sales window and looking at uh, where the orders come in, at the bid, at the offer, above or below the offer of the bid, and the size of each uh, filled offer. So we eliminated anything under five contracts because we're not looking for the amateurs. Uh, even five contracts could still be amateurs. So I'm sorry, we only, uh, below 10 contracts we eliminated. And now we're gonna move forward again. So now you can see that, yes, we've really reversed off of that bottom. And now what we're doing is we are breaking through a little resistance, the previous swing high. And as we do that, we got a block trade coming in here at 76 contracts. And we'll just continue to watch the tape and see what happens. So uh, more, a lot of buying coming in, a lot of green. 
And um, again, we're getting above this um, resistance level. So the one of the points here, as we fast forward again, is, um, and now we've broken above resistance, and we got a block trade there, 57, and some more green coming in. See if we can hold this. But one of the points is that you notice we had a lot of big orders. Oh, we got another volume spike. Okay, that's what we're looking for. So that's what I was going to say. <laughs> that's one of the points. With these volume spikes, this is where I look for exhaustion. And I look for people to get trapped. So we saw the volume spike histogram on the previous low. And now we're seeing it here at this high. And I actually, you know, the thing you might think is, well, if we've got the big orders coming in, these big contracts, 100 contracts, 200 contracts, we should trade in that direction. Not necessarily. Just because there's people who trade with a lot of money doesn't mean that they're right all the time. They get uh, stuck, they get trapped, and just as much as anybody else. So um, my point is you can't rely on, you know, quote unquote, the smart money. The smart money doesn't always make money. And the way they trade is um, you know, rather sophisticated. So they might make money overall, but that doesn't mean that they're right this time on this trade. They get faked out. They trade breakouts like this. I see, I don't trade breakouts. And it's for this very reason is because uh, breakouts fail too often. And so I actually look to fade the breakouts. And that's what we're doing here. We're looking for people to get stuck, people to get trapped, even the big traders, and trade against them. And these volume spikes on the histogram can really help you with that. That's the time to look for those um, false breakouts. And uh, that's kind of the key here, the lesson, I guess, today. And But it's not only that, you know, a lot of people know that, that's, those are exhaustion bars there. But what I also want to see is I want to see traders getting stuck because that adds to the probability that that a breakout is going to fail, believe it or not. Because that's getting in too late. To me, in my opinion, if you're trading breakouts, you are paying retail. I like to get in before the breakout and pay wholesale. So don't know about you, but I'd rather uh, buy low and sell high. Some people say buy high and sell higher. I totally disagree with that, especially in today's markets. I totally, totally disagree with it. I might have been able to get away with that uh, years ago, but not today. Well, if you enjoyed this video, please share it forward by pushing the share button below and share it with your friends. Also, if you're watching on YouTube, please give it a thumbs up and leave a comment below. I'm giving away one of my favorite trade strategies called the rubber band trade. I can teach it to you in about 26 short minutes, has a very high win-loss ratio, and I'll give it to you absolutely free when you click on the image in the top left corner, or if you're in a mobile device, click on the little eye with the circle around it in the right, top right corner. And if you're not watching on YouTube, there's probably a link below or an opt-in form on the side.